I never expected this coming to Cuba. This is out of this world. <laughs> First of all, travelers, and welcome back. Today I am in Havana, Cuba, and I'm exploring New Havana, an area that's significantly different from old Havana in terms of history, in terms of artwork, and in terms of architecture. So let's take a look around. So welcome to New Havana. I'm currently in Plaza de la Revolución, which is Revolution Square, basically. And as you can see around me, first look behind me, more of those awesome taxis, the old style American cars. You've got monuments up there. You've also got murals basically of Che Guevara up on buildings and one thing about this area that you've got to see is that the architecture is so different. It reminds me of very much Soviet architecture which differs hugely from the colonial architecture that you see in old Havana and one thing about this area for me you know from what I understand when the Cuban revolution happened many people didn't believe that Cuba could survive the embargo from the United States the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991 but this just shows that they have survived it so I call them murals but obviously they're not traditional murals in terms of painting if you know what I mean they're actual metal structures attached to the building you might have seen photos, the Che Guevara one is over there, of a massive Cuban flag down the side of the building. It's a typical landmark that you see a lot when you think about Havana or if you look it up online. And this square, useless fact of the day, is actually the 31st largest city square in the world. And this tall structure is a key monument in Plaza de la Revolución. And this square as well, from what I understand, is a, has been a key area in terms of history, in terms of speeches, in terms of addressing hundreds of people. The Pope's been here. You might have seen that Barack Obama famously posed in front of the Che Guevara thing on the wall up there. I'm now heading towards the Vedado area and there are many memorials in Havana. For example, this one to Martin Luther King. I didn't realize he was not even 40 when he died. Also, there's a number of churches. There's one over there somewhere. And of course, wonderful cars everywhere. That's probably the thing I love about Havana the most is the cars. It's just uh, stunning. This is very interesting. A nation that continues year after year to spend more money on military defense than on the programs of social uplift is approaching spiritual death. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., a testament of hope, New York, April the 4th, 1967. And of course, you also have the famous I have a dream speech up there. I don't need to read that. I think you've heard of that one before. And one interesting point that I haven't mentioned in the other Havana videos is that one thing that struck me when I first got here in comparison to Mexico, where I've just been for three months, and this is going to be an obvious one, is the amount of black Cubans. And from what I understand, there was a lot of work done in the past in terms of equality for black people in Cuba. And it's strange, it's quite poignant seeing this sort of thing because, um, you know, it's 2018, you don't differentiate people because of the color of their skin. And obviously, there was a time in the past where we did. Um, so it's good that this kind of monument is here to highlight that fact. And in addition to that, you'll see in one of my other Havana videos, I went to a rum museum in Old Havana. And if you go there, you'll see there's an emphasis on slavery and the fact that slaves from Western Africa were instrumental in the production of sugarcane, the success of Havana Club rum, basically, in Cuba and across the world. 
Slavery was abolished in Cuba in the 1860s, I believe, if I remember from the tour. And again, similar to what I just said about judging people by the color of their skin, when you think of slavery in modern times, it's just unheard of, it's unacceptable. But the fact is, it is a huge part of Cuban history, especially in relation to the production of rum and its success across the world. Now, just a 10 minute walk from that memorial is this place, Capelia. This is slap bang in the middle of the Vedado area. And one of the things I've found about Havana, you saw this in one of my other videos, is the ice cream in this city is out of this world. It's quite possibly the best ice cream I've ever had. As you can see behind me, there's a queue. I said it's popular. Sometimes you have to queue up to an hour apparently, but it's worth it. So let's go and have a look. Right, I was waiting for about half an hour. You might be able to hear behind me, a storm has just started. The thunder and lightning are rolling in. Ooh, what shall I have? There's so many choices. Orange and pineapple, vanilla. I don't know the rest of them. So this place is extremely busy. It's packed. It, I think it's about two o'clock in the afternoon and it appears ice cream is on the agenda for most Cubans today. So basically you sit down, uh, you get a lovely glass of water. Oh, lovely. Gracias. And there's my ice cream. You get a glass of water off the lovely waitress and place your order. So I've got Naranya Pina. Sorry about the pronunciation. Orange and pineapple, basically. Oh, it looks nice. And you get little biscuits on it. Okay, I can move around the other side because the lighting is atrocious. It's still atrocious. But let's try this ice cream, see what all the fuss is all about. Orange and pineapple. Mmm. Oh my gosh. That is amazing. If I thought the one was amazing in Old Havana, this is off the scale. Yes. This is no crappy ice cream you buy in a supermarket. You can taste the flavours of orange and um, pineapple as soon as you put it in your gob, in your mouth, sorry. Yes, I'm English. And all the little biscuity crumbs, it's so as well as biscuits, there's like crumbs, like biscuit crumbs. I don't know what you call them. All mixed up in the melted ice cream and it, oh, that adds a bit of crunch. Absolutely stunning. Beautiful. Mm. As I said in the last video, just leave me here. I'll see you in Colombia. Uh, oh, excuse me. <laughs> Oops. I'm going to keep that in the video. Why not? So it might seem crazy that I'm having a bit of an orgasm over ice cream, but well, until you have it, you won't know what I'm talking about. And the added bonus about this, hello, is <laughs> it only costs two pesos in the local currency to cook, which is basically nothing. That place was top notch. Thank you to the Spanish guy I met in the hostel for recommending me this place. It was wonderful. And I just realized the only thing I've eaten today is ice cream. I've just realized it's probably pronounced Copaia or something like that, not Copelia, but never mind. And there's something I just want to point out about that place relating to human politeness. Yeah, so when you're queuing up, it's really hot, obviously. And two women in front of me said to me they were gonna go over the other side of the road to stand in the shade. Obviously in Spanish, but I got what they're saying. And I said, okay, I'll save your space. And they came back when they saw the queue was going down, went in front of me, no problem. We had a bit of a laugh and a joke, but, and for many of you, this might seem like basic human manners, but coming from someone who grew up in London, if that happened in London, you're more likely to get, get to the back of the fucking queue, mate. Very aggressively, unfortunately as well. And um, that's just one thing about Cuba, this area of the world, the people are very polite which is refreshing to me, especially someone that is from the UK. And, and nothing against people from the UK, but hopefully viewers from the UK will understand what I'm saying. You are more likely to get abuse in that situation. <laughs> okay, next up we're gonna talk a bit about history. And this is a real gem I found. I'm really pleased that I found it. It's a nuclear missile crisis exhibition, basically. If you look on maps me, it will say a museum. It's not really that. And getting to it is a bit strange. You have to come to the Hotel Nacional de Cuba, walk through the hotel, it's very posh. Look at it behind me, lovely. And up the top here, you've got like a, a bunker, you've got cannons, and I don't know about you, but in terms of the Cuban Missile Crisis, I wasn't taught anything about it at school. In general about Cuba, I wasn't taught anything about the Cuban Revolution, etc. I think the closest I got to it in terms of that time period was the assassination of JFK. So I've had to do a bit of research before I got here and it's really interesting. Um, if you don't know about it, basically in the early 60s, because of Cuba's relationship with the Soviet Union, um, they allowed the Soviet Union to store missiles, nuclear missiles in Cuba. And this understandably angered the Americans 
resulting in the nuclear missile crisis, basically. So yeah, this is an interesting place to come in terms of history. And you've got amazing views as well out to the sea and over to Old Havana over there. And you can actually go down in the bunker. How cool is this? Amazing. Let's go. And the nuclear missile crisis of that time was the closest the world ever got to basically nuclear war. I think people forget that. This is, it's about to get very dark, by the way. just in the trenches. I never expected this coming to Cuba. This is out of this world. The good thing is you can walk through these tunnels quite comfortably. I'm five foot ten and I think even if you're six foot you'd be all right. How far do these tunnels go? They're, they're nothing like the ones in um, Vietnam, Coochie tunnels or uh, the ones in Korea, the ones that the North Koreans built to get into South Korea. Oh, this is amazing. <laughs> this is so exciting. This is just wow. When you think of Havana, you do not think of this. I can't think of any more amazing words than amazing. Handy lights to help with the lighting for filming. Okay, I see light at the end of the tunnel. Literally. <laughs> oh crap. Like, where the hell am I? Oh, I'm all the way over here. So this was thoroughly interesting. If you don't know much about the missile crisis, etc., which to be honest, I don't at the moment, I'm gonna do some more research on it after. It's astounding that you can just walk through a luxury hotel and all of a sudden you are in a nuclear bunker stroke trenches. <sighs> I'm overwhelmed. This is one of the best things ever. Havana just went up a gear in the level of amazingness. <sighs> okay, so I hope you've enjoyed having a look around this area of Havana as much as I have. It's been one of the best days I've had in ages. And to end this video, I just want to talk about something very important. So, there's been a common theme in my other Cuba videos and this one, if you've seen them. And for me, it's something that makes the difference between just liking a place and loving a place. And that word is emotion. Something that I'm not really capable of. I don't show emotion very much, but right now I'm feeling quite emotional because this place has had a very positive effect on me, I would say. Havana has fascinated me. It's surprised me in a lot of ways. And I've had a bit of a rocky time here. I've had difficult times. I've had amazing times, but that's what makes an experience in terms of travel. There's very few places that I can say that I love. Those ones are particularly Hiroshima in Japan, Mexico City, Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, pretty much all of New Zealand, and Havana has joined that list. It's just absolutely awesome. You know, so there is one more video coming, by the way. It's uh, a tips and advice video, but this is the last proper travel one. I hope you've enjoyed having a look around Havana, and I hope you come here and you experience the same thing that I have because um, I'm getting a bit choked up saying this right now that never happens um, yeah thanks for watching if you've enjoyed these Havana videos don't forget to like comment and subscribe as always I'm off to Colombia next to Bogota and Medellin I can't wait but I'm gonna miss Havana so much thanks for watching I'll catch you later